Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host on this Friday, June 27th, 2014. We have a story that just went up on InfoWars. Uh, Border Patrol says that cartels are using de facto amnesty to smuggle, quote, whatever they want, unquote, into the U.S. Now, that's a report from Rob Dew and Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs uh, working with Kit Daniels. Uh, Rob Dew and Joe Biggs are at the border in El Paso. That's where they did that exclusive interview. They're going to be joining us later in the show. We're also going to be joined at the bottom of the hour with uh, Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones is going to be coming in with a special report. You know, on Fridays is the day that new releases come out at the movie theaters. And uh, there's not a, this is not a movie that's coming out today, but this is a movie that is going to be coming out, the second, the sequel to Prometheus. And Alex Jones is going to break that down with what he knows about it. And we're also going to have on the show today a psychiatrist, Peter Bregan. This is someone who has been, he's a practicing psychiatrist, a very extensive resume, uh, an author of many books about the negative effects of SSRIs, of uh, Ritalin, other drugs, uh, the counterproductive uh, effects of these drugs, as well as someone who has fought lobotomies uh, early in his career. In the 1970s, he fought against lobotomies coming back. And if you remember back in December, there was a Wall Street Journal investigative report about what the VA did to veterans after World War II. If they had problems with PTSD, they just gave them lobotomies. Well, today, the DARPA and uh, Obama's Brain Project, they're looking at other ways to deal with PTSD. They're looking at ways to selectively delete memories. Think about that. That brings Orwell's uh, predictions about putting stuff down the memory hole into a very literal interpretation. So I want to talk to him about these uh, new technological uh, approaches to essentially doing lobotomies, the danger of that. And certainly uh, he is someone who is aware of civil liberties issues as well. So we're going to have Dr. Peter Bregan on with us later in the show. It's a very packed show. Now, this article that just went up about what's going on at the border of El Paso, this is uh, Stu Harris of the National Border Patrol Council. And he said that the uh, cartels are pushing groups across the river to tie up our agents. He said, meanwhile, our agents are tied up processing and feeding these people, changing diapers, and the drug cartels are running whoever and whatever they want across the border and other places. He said, who or what is coming in, we don't know. And we won't know until something bad happens. Now, that is something we should really focus on because... As we look at what's going on in Iraq, as we look at the total failure of what we have done, the cost that we have suffered in terms of lives lost, uh, 4,000 American lives, more than that, uh, who knows how many Iraqis have died there. The massive amount of money that has been spent there for people who are political companies who are politically connected with their no big contracts. We look at the collapse of Iraq and we understand that the destruction of that nation came about when buildings collapsed. The original lie was not the Iraq lie. The original lie was the buildings collapsing. And now we have people who are pushing back against that in New York. And I want to play this clip real quickly here. Go ahead and play that clip, guys. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. <laughs> Just reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before. This building seven. The building was it wasn't hit. Or destroyed by well placed dynamite to knock it down. Okay, now that's. Uh, I, w I brought that up because there's a new measure on the New York City ballot that would force a probe of World Trade Center Building 7, which was never hit. And they talk about conspiracy theorists. Well, they're actually skeptics and investigators. They've collected 53,000 signatures to get that on the ballot. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. Why is it that they don't want to investigate it if they said it was something that happened because of structural defects? Wouldn't they want to know what those structural defects were? 
Stay with us. We're going to be right back. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host for this Friday, June 27th, 2014. As I mentioned in the last segment, Paul Joseph Watson is going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. He has some very good news again. Yesterday, he had a, uh, we talked about an article that he found where a former CIA agent was talking about the hope that he had that we were going to have a peaceful revolution that would result in greater freedom, not a violent revolution that's going to result in a totalitarian state. Today we have some very good news on another front about a sheriff who actually stood up for people's constitutional rights in a big way. So he's going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. We also have reports coming from the border. We're going to be joined by Rob Dew and Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs who are at El, in El Paso looking at the border situation there. And they have interviewed one of the uh, Border Patrol agents. Actually, he's, a, uh, uh, a, he's with the National Border Patrol Union, I think he's uh, vice president, of the, yes, vice president of that union in El Paso. He gave them an exclusive interview that's up on Infowars.com right now. And he was talking about how dangerous it is that the cartels are using de facto amnesty to smuggle whatever they want to into the United States. That's right, they're putting in whatever they want to and whoever they want to. And as I was just pointing out in the last segment, we need to understand where this came from. We need to understand 
that this actually started not just with Obama. This is something that goes back 20 years, the beginning of NAFTA. And as General Petraeus pointed out last week, this is what comes after America. We have NAFTA. This is the fall, the collapse of America and the rise of NAFTA. And this goes through multiple administrations, started with the Clintons who got it passed and went through the Bush, now being activated by Obama. And I think a couple of stories that are on Drudge Report right now from Infowars.com perfectly illustrates this policy. We've got an abandoned Walmart that is considered as feds explore immigrant shelter options. And a, that's a story by Don Salazar that's up on Infowars right now. He says feds are looking 1,500 miles inland to warehouse these people with a leaky roof and a building of Walmart. Now, Walmart is a vital company. They're doing great everywhere. They're some of the richest people in the world or the Walmart family. And yet here is an area where this is a symbol of economic collapse. So what are they doing? They're bringing that and they're bringing the people that are going to bring about and accelerate that economic collapse. This is a Cloward and Piven strategy to rapidly expand the welfare state, to bring the economy down, to burden it with uh, this type of expense. This is something that was gamed out 50 years ago by these two guys, Cloward and Piven. So we see that happening in New York as they're busing in the, uh, transporting them 1,500 miles into a Walmart that is literally collapsing. And then at the same time, we have this article that was uh, from yesterday. Paul Joseph Watson has virtually crime-free county in Florida gets an MRAP armored vehicle. And of course, these MRAPs, these are resistant to mines. These are military vehicles. He's got a picture. This is a gigantic vehicle. We've got two guys standing here. The hood of the car is taller than these two guys. If you don't see that picture there, it is absolutely amazing. Now, this is an area. This is a little town called Walton, Florida. I mean, it sounds like the, uh, the TV show from the 70s, the Waltons. Essentially, no crime. But that's okay. Because war is coming to America. Homeland Security is making sure of it. The same people that are collapsing the economy is symbolized by this dilapidated Walmart and this demographic surge. They are also arming people in the interior to fight whatever and whoever they're letting in the borders. At the same time, they continue the harassment of Americans within the United States at the airports to in order to protect us from these same type of people against drug dealers, against terrorists who might come in through the airports. Well, they're letting them in at the border. And it's the same organization. It's Homeland Security that is doing both of these. And of course, we had the article yesterday where the guy said, well, you may not like the fact that we've got a SWAT team uh, and, and all these atrocities that are occurring from the uh, SWAT teams. Now, 80,000 incidents of this a year where people are attacked by SWAT teams. And of course, the one that's about a month old where they threw a flashbang grenade into the crib of an 18-month-old child, and that child is still struggling for his life. He says, you may not like that, but you're not going to be complaining about that when ISIS comes home. Where's, how's ISIS going to get into the country? Well, they've opened up the borders, haven't they? And they're putting in MRAP vehicles in small towns that have had no crime. A lot of people are talking after the Iraq war is what we're seeing happening in Iraq. They're talking about the lies that began all of that, the lies from the Bush administration. But the collapse of Iraq that was preceded by lies was also preceded by another lie. And that lie was the same lie they used to create Homeland Security. And of course, that lie was 9-11. That was the collapse of Building 7. And as I was pointing out just before the break, there is now a measure that they're trying to get on the ballot in New York City. Uh, they've collected 53,000 signatures. And of course, the way they report this uh, in Ross' story, they say conspiracy theorists. They love to use that word all the time. Well, they're skeptics. They don't believe that this third building that wasn't hit by anything just fell down all by itself. Especially when we have recordings of the guy who owned the building saying, pull it, which is what they the phrase that they use for building demolition. So they got 53,000 people that want to see this measure put on the ballot. What is the measure? The measure wants voters to decide whether New York City's Department of Buildings should investigate the collapse of any building taller than 20 stories, going back to September 11th, 2001. This is from the New York Coalition for Accountability Now. 
Now, the interesting thing is, in the article, they say, well, you know, this has all been investigated by NIST, by the National Institute of Standards and Technology.